So it, this project is focused on how ocean currents um, affect diversity of plankton protists. So it's a project that is, has been involved, like, like we have been two physicists, uh, Simone Pigolotti and I, and two biologists. That is Alex Busek and Tom Bourguignon, also from, from the university. So it's an interdisciplinary project. Um, the origin of this project is this paper here uh, that is, was, was published on nature, ecology, and evolution that uh, basically um, analyzes the samples of the Tara Ocean Project. That is a very a huge project um, which, in which many groups, uh, um, research groups, are taking samples from many, many points, as you see here, like these yellow points uh, in the ocean. They take samples of water and they analyze everything there. Temperature, depth, salinity, everything. They, they uh, publish everything online, and especially all the sequence data of the, all the microorganisms that uh, are present in the sample. Everything is published there. Um, so what they do uh, in this paper, particularly, is to measure one of the main uh, measures for um, characterized diversity of ecological communities. That, that is the species abundance distribution. So basically, what you do is to measure the frequency of the abundance of a species. So basically, the number of individuals that each species has. They count this abundance and, and observe this, this pattern. They observe basically two regimes. One is these black dots, and another is these red dots for high abundance uh, species. They focus on this rare biosphere, as they, as they say. Rare because it's very small number of individuals per species. And there are many, many, many of these individuals, a very small abundance of species. What they observe is that uh, this is characterized by, by a power law with a very high exponent, uh, an exponent that, exponent that is higher than one. Um, why I say one? one. So the, the um, main theory to explain, uh, the, or the simplest theory that has been proposed in an uh, ecological um, area to explain ecological communities is the neutral theory that predicts that this the case has a power law of one. This explains many, many, many communities. It, uh, although it's super simple, it describes many communities. However, it doesn't describe this, this um, system. And we want to know why. So there are not any satisfactory model that explains this. And uh, what we want is to try to model it to understand what is happening there. Our hypothesis is that oceanic currents, due to these sp special structures like advec advec uh, chaotic advection and the barriers that it creates, will affect the diversity. And so that the, do that, the species abundance distribution is steeper. From doing that, we propose a model in which we have the plankton dynamics based on um, neutral theory, so that any individual uh, is better than other. So it doesn't have, so uh, each species doesn't have a better fitness than other. Everyone has the same chance to die or reproduce, independently on the fitness. Because what we want to, to focus is on the um, role of the currents, not on the role of of the dynamics. So we wanted to keep it simple. I see the effect of the currents here. The, for, uh, for doing this, what we do is to 
do the dynamics for just a sample in the ocean. So we have a sample of a species that comes from a, a huge community, and we just simulate the what happens with the sample that we are taking nowadays back in time. So we reproduce or trace back in time all the dynamics of such sample. So we reconstruct the ancestry tree, the family tree, until the most common ancestor. In this way, we have many... Uh, so we don't have to simulate the whole community and then just analyze one of the population, but just we analyze just the relevant information we want. Um, so for the um, currents, there are many models that reproduce uh, quite well the uh, main characteristics of the chaotic advection of the currents or the oceanic currents. We are taking, we have taken this uh, model uh, as the main model. It's described in these two papers. Uh, and basically it's based on a jet, a, a jet here that we see. Particles goes here, but uh, eventually they get trapped temporarily here and then they goes back. So they have, you have these idols. Uh, but the particular model, we will show that it doesn't matter. The, the only thing that matters is that we have chaotic advection. We have proved that with other two models that I will describe later. But th this is our main model. For the plankton dynamics, we were based in a, on a neutral model explaining this, in which we don't have the lattice as we usually have, that <coughs> simplifies everything but we have continuous space. That is what we need for our fluxes. So we call it forward model because it's forward on time, in time. And basically it's, uh, as many of you know, you reproduce, one random individual reproduces in some neighborhood with size L, and then uh, individuals diffuse, and then they die by competition with others. So in mean, on average, you will have always one particle per neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> the problem, as I said here, is that you need to simulate the whole community. That is huge. So for avoiding that and do it a more uh, computationally uh, optimal uh, simulation, and being able to do the simulation, because you couldn't do it any, uh, in other way, is to do a backward model. So from the sample, backwards in time. So again, you have displacement, or diffusion, that is going to be backwards on time, the, diff the diffusion, and what we call coalescence. So basically, you establish every time a particle enters the neighborhood, you establish that that particle is the child of the one that of the nape of the uh, that is here. Once you save that relation, you remove the particle, and then you start removing the particles until one is there. That one will be the common ancestor of everybody. This. Can I say something? Sure, sure. And you said very well, but let me ask something for you guys that maybe about or with uh, with backward dynamics. It's an idea which is very, very nice. It is, imagine that we have a model, uh, like a model, which you just have two opinions, one or one. And imagine that half of the population is not is to make it simple. Half of the population is plus and half of the population is minus. If you look around the forward dynamics, a lot of times it's lost because you are looking for people around you who have the same opinion. Here, the dynamics of plankton, the big area around you, typically is very similar to you. So, the simulation are extraordinarily slow. The only dynamics happen at the interface. Okay. So, the way to simulate that in an efficient way is that you start with some configuration and you back, go backward in time. So, two particles that are very are similar and nearby, backward in time, come from the same one. 
So that's the way to reproduce the, the, the course in the process in a very, very efficient way. You don't lose time looking inside to access that one in the Yes, yes. But you're assuming that the dynamics is the same process. The dynamics. The dynamics. You don't lose anything. Yeah, it's taking the words of dynamics, it's very well defined. Yeah, but it's not typical. If you are going to do something, going back to the program, the dynamics are not the same. You are the same dynamics. Yeah, well, yeah, because the dynamics here is just formal. Yes. So when you put it together, you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I. So we have another paper in which we demonstrate that this. Both models are equivalent uh, for at least one uh, for high diffusion. If you have some other particularities, you may, may lost this equivalence. But but we have a huge region in which it's it is. In the lattice, it's exact. In the lattice, it's exact. In, in is this uh, continuous space which makes it m much more complicated. But but it is for for high enough. It's just for very, very, very small diffusions in which it, it's not. But do for, because of a strong, uh, strong noise. Mm -hmm. Strong noise. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I like that it's more dy dynamic. <laughs> so I would like to show a video so that you have an idea of what happens here, because sometimes if you haven't uh, seen before particles in an chaotic affection, could be, uh, well, it's good to know. So here, the gray area is the initial sample, and it evolves backward in time. So you see generations going, going backwards. And this is the flux. And you see what is particular of uh, chaos, that you have these fi filaments in time. And they uh, rip, like, rip, um, mixes and the mixes uh, in time. Uh, but yeah, what I, re we really are interested in these filaments. That is, as we will see, the main co cause of this. With time, the communities will be separated eventually. And uh, yeah, this is very, very large scale uh, and time. Um, so yeah, the most important part is the initial part. It's what determines everything, almost. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good for you to know uh, how this works. Uh, okay, so back again to this. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, what was the gray dot again? Is the where the initial population was? So that you have a reference of what is happening, where they are moving. Uh, How much computational power did you need for this A lot. <laughs> um, so at OIS we have a computer that is similar to Proteus. So we need that for sure. Because now everything is uh, optimized and you could have one for each parameter of the flux, the results for the four, well, for the backward with a lot of population, maybe three, four days for each parameter. And we will see that we have a lot of parameters to explore all the regimes. So yeah. And, and that is with the backward model. With the forward, it's crazy. You will need two weeks, or if it's optimized. Um, Okay, uh, so then with these dynamics, we measure what we were interested in, that is the species abundance distribution. So first of all, we, as, you, as I said, we simulate many, many parameters of the flux, uh, and for each, we obtain the species abundance. So quantitatively, we first see that uh, if we put the model with currents and without currents, there are differences, right? In general, these are more steeper. But to quantify this, we measure. Something. 
How do you measure abundance? Abundance. So basically, we have our sample. In each individual, we, we will be assigned to a species. So species one will have two individuals. Special species uh, two, five, and so on. So I count. How many species have five individuals? So one, two, three, four. Four species have five individuals. Okay. So you, you assign five individuals, so five species have five individuals, or four, I don't know what I said, but four species have five individuals, and so on. So there are many species which have one, two individuals, and many, like, the very big abundances are just for one, two species, for example. Um, so that's a good question to understand what this ex implies, because uh, if, so if these cars are steeper, that means that the, our sample is more diverse. So that there, that there are less abundant species, but many species with one, two, three. So many, many species, more, much more diverse. Our uh, um, samples in the with currents, oceanic currents, than that without currents. This is maybe difficult to see in this figure, but we, what we do is to represent the exponent alpha of our curves and measure the distribution of these exponents. And what we see is, although there are some areas in which you could not distinguish, um, there is a clear separation. Because here, exponent alpha, like uh, uh, a variance in the, like a difference in this exponent is very, very big. And implies like uh, a lot of uh, differences. So you see that there is a different distribution without currents and with currents. So there, the exponent is higher for with currents. We also measure another diversity pattern that is the number of species of the ocean compared to the one with uh, well, ocean, that means with currents. Over different parameters. So yeah, one run like will be uh, for parameters of the flags uh, that makes the jet more like longer or and, like so different, different. Yes, also different positions on the on the it's space is a mess. It's a everything because it's basically what we have in our sample, right? They took measures uh, measures in Japan in many different situations. Um, and yeah, so we also uh, measured uh, another diversity pattern that is basically the number of species with the sample size. Um, so we see that uh, for currents, the number of species is higher than for lakes. That is lakes without currents, ocean with currents. Uh, so, and it grows in this way with the sample size. So now that we have characterized uh, what happens with currents in our model, we wanted to compare it with the data. So for that, we called our colleagues in OIST, uh, Alice Busset and Tom Bourguignon, that uh, they are biologists and specialists in sequence data and analyze sequence data, and they help us to um, analyze uh, our data. So for ocean current, uh, ocean samples, we used this uh, reference, and for lakes, we used this one. What we observe is, is this, and for seeing it more clear, ah, yeah, ah, okay. for seeing it more clearly, we we uh, see this, this uh, plot. This is our model. The, the dark one is our model. The, the light ones are the samples uh, in the ocean and lakes, the real samples. And we observe that both the, the, the behavior is the same and that our predictions are very, very close to what uh, it's observed given the circumstances. It's very, very complex <laughs> biological system, and having this is something very uh, uh, very good, I think. Um, 
We also measured, again, the number of species. Oh. So the data from lakes were often the expedition figure or not? No, that one, so we wanted to compare the, that Tara Ocean uh, with the currents, but we needed also data for non, non uh, samples without currents. So we uh, looked for another source. Another source. Hmm. And, well, uh, this is the, the data compared to our model, that is the dark one. So the tendency, like the, the growth with the number of species uh, is uh, also behaves as our model. Um, so once we have proposed a model, we have seen that it predicts quite well what happens in the nature. So now we can think, okay, so now that it reproduces it, let's see why it reproduces it. Now we have the model, we can know what is happening with the sample exactly in time, in, with the flags, analyze everything. So what we do is to analyze the local fitted size Lyapunov exponent, um, which is described here, detecting barriers to transport. So this exponent is basically developed to uh, it's, I don't know if you see the, the image well, but it's seen that there are some barriers that make the population um, evolve with these filaments that we saw in the video. And this exponent characterizes this, these barriers. Uh, the procedure to obtain it is a little complicated, so I prefer not to explain it. I had it up a slide, but I think it was a little difficult for this. So just take in mind that we have an exponent for each point at this um, spatial um, at, in this space. And uh, the exponent characterizes the, the mobility or the, the barriers at each point. If the particular, um, if the um, um, individuals are uh, limited especially by these barriers. Sorry, but the system is homogeneous or it's not? It's not. Oh. It's, we have a, a chaos. Okay. So what we measure, let's see, maybe, huh, uh, okay. So we measure the exponent, measure for each point in this space, with the, uh, compared with the Lyapunov exponent for that point, particular point. <clears throat> so B Lyapunov exponent C, uh, says that our sample is more limited in time, in space. And he, um, so what we see is that there is a positive correlation. So the higher the exponent or limitation, the higher the exponent of the species abundance distribution. And it has a p-value that is significant, so there is a significant correlation. To, so what this says is that the exponent is correlated with the advection, the barriers created by advection, by chaos. And it doesn't matter which particular flux you, you use, if it has chaotic affection. So we have used also a Adriatic model uh, in this reference that is very particular model of the Adriatic Sea. And we observe the same behavior. We also used a vortex model that is very, very simple, the simplest model for chaotic affection, and we obtain the same. To emphasize this, we also measure what happens if the parameter that, that controls the time dependence of the model is set to zero. So we don't have, we have the flux, but we have without time dependence. That means that we don't have chaotic affection. We don't have chaos. And in that case, again, the exponent reduces and goes to the, the one without currents. So basically, chaos is the, the cause of this. Um, so what the conclusions can be summed up in these three figures. We first propose a model that is a goal for itself. 
So basically, we propose a continuous space neutral model backwards in time that is able to reproduce the diversity of huge populations and with very, like, in three days for, like, very computation, it's very optimal computational. With this model, we predicted the observations in lakes and oceans. And not only that, but we also understood that one of the mechanisms that could be responsible of this increase in the exponent is chaotic advection. Um, so everything has been done, as I said, in collaboration with uh, the evolutionary genomic unit in the at OIST, um, Alice Busset and Tom Bourguignon, and Simone Pigoletti, that you probably know. Um, and well, this has been published here, and it can, if you have any doubts, you can see it. Um, thank you very much.